So we will get to some winners and losers from the first day of free agency, but I have to get some reaction. Oh, you can't do winners and losers for three years. <laughs> we got to let it play. To let some, it play out. Some Go ahead. signings that happened today. You have Patrick Queen signing three years, $41 million oh. to go to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I heard Pittsburgh doesn't spend money. They needed a middle linebacker. That's not a lot of money for a middle linebacker. What? Oh. $15 million a year. Yeah. Especially because you're not paying your quarterback anything. Listen, I, I I don't get seduced by it. I mean, Patrick Queen is a name, but he was the second best linebacker on his own damn team. Queen is fine. You took him from a divisional rival. Okay. Addition by subtraction. But I don't like paying off-ball linebackers like that. I'm going to just, that's kind of a meh. So I guess I'd be in trouble in Steeler land if I didn't just, you know, bronze the proverbial penis of that See, GM. I'll say I like this, David, because as you say, they don't spend a lot of money, so they're trying to be active in free agency. So the cheap and guy bought dinner for once, and now you want to build a statue of him. I build a statue, but you know what? <laughs> okay, you can at least give the head nod like you, you're hey, picking up the chair. Are the Steelers cool. better today than they were pre free, free, free agency? Yes, yes, they've improved the quarterback. All jokes about Mr. Unlimited. And yes, obviously, Patrick Queen is still a good football player. I just think that's a and taken ton from of money. a division rival. I think helps. Okay, noted. And then one more before we get to winners and losers. Derrick Henry signs a two-year, sixteen million dollar deal, almost twenty million, to go to the Baltimore Ravens. I love it. Gee whiz, how does Baltimore afford any of it? Shouldn't they save their money for two thousand twenty-eight? Look, they should go all, get Jamal Williams. All I'll say is this. <laughs> Derrick Henry was built in a lab to be a Raven. And if they preserve him the right way, he is the hammer. He's the closer. He is a guy that in the second half, in the cold and the wind and the rain of Cincinnati, of Cleveland, of Pittsburgh, of Buffalo, of Kansas, he's a non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. So, I, David, Limited. what do we not like? You don't pay running backs. But in this case, they're in their Super Bowl window and he gives them something they don't have. Limit his carries to about 15 a game, and I think you'll be okay. He doesn't – Now you need to have him in January. Right. So Now, in games where all yeah. of a sudden he's dominating, you increase the workload. But right now, you work him in a tandem, 15 carries, especially in the third and fourth quarter. As Mike said, you're the closer. You're gonna, we're going to grind this thing out so that it's not Lamar being the leading rusher. We can just turn around hand it off to you and then work the play action. In. Yes. Yep. So let's start with the first winner here. Well, I'm going to give you two winners here. It is position group. Start with the defensive tackles. You had Chris Jones. You had Christian Wilkins. You had Justin uh, uh, Matabuke for the Ravens. And then you also have the other position group on the other side of the ball, the guards. Jonah Jackson, Kevin Dotson, Robert Hunt. Those would be winners. Would you agree? What, in their bank accounts? Yeah, the guards. Yeah, and the, yeah, yeah. I think the guard market is stupid. No, they're around it. Landon Dickerson making 20 million bucks. Robert Hunt making 20 million. It's crazy. But good work if you can get it. Yeah, I think and I'm not mad in the least. I'm sorry, Rico. I'm not mad they didn't bring Jonah back. I'm not paying that man $15 million a year. Don't need to. Go ahead. But sorry. I'm not going to act like he didn't help you win games last Very year. Very good either. football player. But yeah. I just wanted that money for other things. Oh, no. Guards got paid. I, I think TJ was out there cursing the fact that he was oh. born way too soon. Oof. <laughs> Next winner on the list would be the Atlanta Falcons and Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, they say, because of what he's gained and collected his entire career. Mm -hmm. But Atlanta, because they now can take over the NFC South. Cousins has managed to, I think he's going to end up with like some $280 million of guaranteed money. For somebody who was, wasn't drafted in the first round, whose people was made fun of, called him Ned Flanders, look at how he dresses and he just goes out there and he wins. Now, are you going to win the Super Bowl with him? I don't think so, but he's a consistent winner. He He's a solid seven and a half. And in a bad division, you just got to get into the playoffs. And I think, yeah, you're now better than everybody else. Tampa, Baker Mayfield, yeah, you're better than them. That's you're the better other than thing. the Saints. You're, Rico, you're, you're Rico brought this up as Panthers. part of Carlton Davis. That's a crap division with crap quarterback play. Sorry to break your heart. That means six games a year, Carlton Davis, if he's healthy. Face nothing. You face Bryce Young, Taysom Hill, so, famous yeah, Jameis. If you're Cousins, your job is to at least be 5-1 and one in your divisional game. Your, so job's you break all division. Yeah. your job's home playoff games. Right. Like I think Atlanta got a lot better because the only thing holding them back from being dangerous was just competent 
quarterback play. Not Taylor Heineke, not Desmond Ritter, male pattern baldness. Like, competent. So now Kirk you'll Cousins see a Drake... is way more than competent. Yeah, so now a Drake London or somebody like that. Yeah, you're gonna, uh, all of a sudden, you can run a playbook and actually throw to your receivers and, and to Kyle Pitts and, and use Bijan, not as a decoy, but to score touchdowns. Stunning. Uh, first loser here would be Justin Fields because he sat there and watched jobs like Atlanta, Vegas, and Pittsburgh fill up, and nobody is calling about him. Justin is looking like the kid who is still waiting for his parents to pick him up from soccer practice, and everybody else is gone, and he's at the curb with his Gatorade bottle, watching every car that goes by standing up saying, is that them? Is that not? No, that's that's not them either. Look, I, guys, I, honestly, I think sometimes it's like a peer review. The league is telling you what they think about you. Now, is part of it a leverage play? They know the Bears have declared what they're going to do, and I don't need to give you anything. I think the same thing probably happens with the L.A. Chargers. Like, they probably have to cut Khalil Mack. But it just is what it is. Like, I, I don't – I still find it hard to believe that you're paying Gardner Minshew before you pick up Justin Fields' fifth-year option. But that's where we've arrived at. So the league really must be down on him. See, I don't think the league is down on him, Mike. I think the first part of what you said is true. The league is smart. You know when his value fell? When Caleb Williams came out and said, I'm not going to give anybody medical information until later. Ah. Which now means, well, Chicago, you're still going to trade? Well, we can't right now because... What if you find out he has some structural damage to a knee and now you got to keep him? So you're, I, my, I think that both will be on the roster come this fall because you, you're kind of stuck with them because Caleb played you. And then finally, the final loser would be Justin Jefferson because it says you have a quarterback in Sam Darnold and maybe a rookie. Good luck next season. Yeah, I, for everything they did right defensively, and I actually don't, hate the Aaron Jones revenge play. I don't know what you're doing with Sam Darnold. Maybe, <laughs> maybe no they, idea. They saw that Rams game, the final game of the year, that meaningless game. And he went out there and almost won, but <laughs> they didn't. But he, you, know, you could tell David that Darnold was out there playing for a job somewhere. He was auditioning and it worked because it's 10 million guaranteed. It's not incentive. He's getting ten million dollars, but yeah, if I'm Justin Jefferson, I'm like we we couldn't just keep Ned Flanders. And you're like, this can't be the answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, I expect he'll be the next receiver who just walks in and says, "Trade me." I I don't want to be here anymore. Trade me to a contender. Yeah, you may be right about that. That is in football today.